everyone, and today I'm here with another op art video. And just a reminder that op art uses line and shape to form an optical illusion. Today we're going to be looking at some checkerboards and some circles and how you can just manipulate the shape a little bit to form an optical illusion. So let's get started. So I'm going to demonstrate on how to make your op art with checkerboards and circles. It'll look something like this when we get done. We're going to start out practicing in our sketchbook. So in order to do this, you're going to need your sketchbook and you're going to need a ruler and you're going to need a pencil. Some things that have a circle to them, like I've got a cup and a roll of tape and some markers. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and the first thing we're going to do is set up the checkerboard. So you're going to put a dot for every inch on your ruler. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Your sketchbook's probably a different size. Slide the ruler straight up to the other side. Put the dots at the top. And your paper and your sketchbook might not be perfect. Um, inches like you might have a half inch there that's fine and take your ruler line it up and draw the lines connecting just connect them all the way through to the edge of your paper and we're just setting up the one inch by one inch checkerboard to start with so I got my parallel lines then I'm going to turn my paper the other way I'm going to put my ruler across the top of the page this way and I'm going to put a dot at every inch mark here too. So I'm just setting up my basic checkerboard. One, two, three, four, five. Slide it down to the bottom. Put a dot for every inch. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to connect them. This is just our practice one, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now we have a grid like a checkerboard grid the next thing you're going to want to do is to find those objects with circles that you can trace and so I've got like a roll of tape and I want you to trace maybe eight circles at least you can find different sizes I would have some coming off the page um, and then I would like you to also overlap at least two of the circles somewhere Um, other things, I don't know if you have bottles around your house. This is a paint bottle that I'm using. And they don't have to be big circles either. You could find, like this is a glue cap. So if I wanted to make a little, little teeny tiny circle, I could. So I want you to have eight. And maybe I'll put maybe one right over here. Like I said, they can come off the page. It makes it more interesting when they do that. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Need one more. I'm gonna put another little cap here. And that's the basic way to set that up. So the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is how to add the color to your design. And if you look at this checkerboard, you can see I used black for the base color. And the checkerboard pattern just shifted over when it went inside the circles. I'm going to demonstrate with a black, but it doesn't have to be black. For this one, the um, base color was purple. So it could really be any color that you want. And when you go to your rough draft, what I'm going to tell you to do is I'm going to start with the very top square. And I'm going to color that in, but where if a circle comes into it, some of you might not have a circle there, and that's fine. You would just color the whole square. But I'm going to color the whole square that does not go into the circle. And I'm going to go across the top row. So the next one, I'm going to leave white because I'm doing a checkerboard. And then the next one, I am going to do black, but if it 
has a circle coming in, I don't color the circle. I'm gonna do the whole background this way. The next row is gonna be opposite, and I'll show you that when I get to it. But this one's white, next one is black. The reason I like you to do this in your sketchbook first is a lot of people make a mistake. It's kind of tricky the first time you're doing it, figuring out which one, and if you mess up one, you tend to mess up the whole thing. But I am going to fast forward this and then you can um, see. But this last, this last one here, it's got a circle, so I don't color any of it black. When I go to the next row, this would be white, this would be black, but it's got a circle, I don't color it. This one would be white because this one was black, but I don't color it because it's in a circle. This one is white, so the one below it goes to be black. And then I'm just going to speed up, finish coloring the rest of this in. So I've colored the background checkerboard in. I didn't do anything in the circles yet. And you can see that pattern just goes through the background, but I didn't do anything in the circles. I'm gonna demonstrate now how to shift the checkerboard over. So you can see it's still a checkerboard inside the circle, but what I did is I just shifted it over. So on your practice one, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look and I'm gonna go into the circle. If it was white above it, then that little section that goes in the square is now gonna be black. So this is the most confusing part for people. But if I were just to color um, this one, like if I colored that corner in black, you wouldn't see the circle anymore. So it needs to, it looks gonna look like it shift over. This one was white, so that little part of the square that goes in the circle, I'm gonna color it black. So I'm just reversing the pattern. This one was black, so that little piece stays white. This one is black, this little piece stays white. You might have some overlapping parts. Don't color anything that overlaps in yet, but you can do the main part of each circle. Once you get it started, then you're gonna continue that pattern. So if this little piece was black, the one next to it's gonna be white, and then it's gonna switch over to the black. And then the next row, looking at my checkerboard again, and everything should go in a diagonal line when you're doing the checkerboard. So. If you were to color the box right below it in, it would look like a stripe and not a checkerboard. Now where I get to this overlapping, I'm not gonna do anything here. I know this box is white. Um, and then the one, this little tiny corner right here would be black. And then this little teeny tiny corner would also be black. But I finished that circle because I'm not gonna do the overlapping part. So I'm going to fast forward and show you how to do the rest. So now I've gone and I've colored in the circle part and I've switched the pattern over one more time. The only thing I didn't do were those overlapping sections. And so now when the section overlaps, if you have two circles coming together, the pattern is gonna switch again. So it's really gonna go back to the original design that was in the background. Um, but that's also another tricky part. So I'm gonna demonstrate that right here, I have an overlapping section. This box was white, so where it overlaps, I need to turn that into black. So the pattern is just gonna switch again. So wherever you see that part where it overlaps, you just switch it again. And that was just the real 
small part that I had right in that section. The other circle that I had overlapping was this tiny one in the middle. And it just happens to be all in the white square. So I know that the circle itself will just be black. But the pattern just reverses itself. And you should be able to see the outline of every circle, even the overlapping parts. Um, make sure you go through and find any little teeny tiny corners. Sometimes I miss those, like little pieces like that. Um, some people like to just put a little pencil X where they're going to color before they do, just to make sure that they don't color the wrong part. Because if you color the wrong section and it starts to look like a stripe, it can mess your whole project up, which is why we're going to practice this first before putting it on our final. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to color this, and that's the fun part. So I have some examples to show you what we're going to do. And I'm going to use colored pencils on my final. For my practice one, I'm just going to use markers to save time. But you're going to decide what colors you want your circles to be. And then the white squares in the background, you're going to pick a color for that as well. So this particular one, you can see all the circles were colored in a particular way. Um, they added some shading to it. This particular one, the background was red and then they did fancy patterns in each one of the circles. Where it overlaps, you can choose to keep it like the same pattern or you can switch it to another one. It's really up to you for those um, particular parts where they're overlapping. So this is another example. They came up with different patterns for the circles. Their background they chose to do every other row, every other row blue and green, and that was fine too. This person had their base color as purple, but they did the white squares that were left in like the bluish color and they did different designs in the circles. And on this particular one, you can see she drew little pictures of ladybugs and some fire and some stars in there. So you can be creative with this. In the background though, don't color the I like to save the circles for last, and I'm just going to pick a color that I like, and I am going to choose pink, and I'm not going to color the um, actual circle in, I'm just going to do the rest of the white ones um, pink, but not the circle, just the background. So I'll speed this up for you. So as you can see, I have left the circles white for now and I just colored the background white ones in pink. And now I can just go ahead and I can design my circles to be any which way. Um, so for instance, I could have this one blue if I wanted to and I can change each circle a different color, a different design. I'm gonna put up some finished ones for you to look at as I'm um, talking here, but uh, I like to use colored pencil for my final one, but in my practice version, I just use markers just because it goes a little bit faster. And um, I hope you have some great ideas for your colors. I look forward to seeing what you guys can do. And send me a picture when you finish. Love to see your work.